Good morning. The title of the devotional today is That Primary Pronoun. Let me say that again. That Primary Pronoun. Of all the sayings of Jesus remembered by people, the Lord's Prayer is probably the number one remembered part. Brief, with short phrases, this one prayer given to his follower, followers is available to anyone, regardless of religious affiliation, beliefs, faith, practice, whatever. This prayer deserves a closer study by each of us. So that's what we're going to do this morning, look at it very closely. What do these words of the Lord's Prayer really mean to you and to me? Perhaps the most significant word of the entire prayer is the pronoun our, O-U-R, and the related pronouns us and we. The thrust of these pronouns is that we are to be aware and to think inclusively as we pray these, these phrases. For example, the first two words, our Father, immediately broadens our viewpoint and perspective, our compass. While God may be my Father, and that is certainly true for each of us, the God we are praying to is also our Father. We claim that special relationship to God as Father. Let me push the plural emphasis to its further reaches. Where does the our end? How far does the our extend? My family? Yes. My community? My friends? My church? My class? My state? My country? My race? My color people? Persons in other countries? Some that I don't even really know? Is the God I'm praying to their Father also? Does my saying, our Father, reach around the whole earth and encompass and include every individual, every human being, including foreigners, people I'll never see or know or meet? Does my use of the plural pronoun, our, lessen in any way, shape, or form my personal relationship with my God? Can God really love every person on this planet as much as God loves me or you? Does using the plural pronoun our mean I've, I'm loved any less because I'm wondering if God's love is that Divisible or indivisible? Another phrase with this primary pronoun, give us this day our daily bread. Does the us and our and our really mean that I want my God to give all of us our bread, our daily bread? I certainly want my God to take care of my daily bread, don't you? I confess my need and desire to be fed daily. Do I want my God to be as concerned about everybody in the whole world as my God is about me? Is he truly our father? He's not just my father, is he? Isn't he your father and my father? So he is our Father. Have you ever tried praying the Lord's Prayer and using the singular pronouns like, my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. Forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from evil, and so forth. 
How does saying the prayer, or praying the prayer is a better way to say it, sound to you and me when we use the singular pronoun rather than the plural? Recall the circumstances of Jesus sharing this prayer with his disciples. Jesus guides them in praying with these words. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases like the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, and then Jesus invites each of us, you and me and all of us, to pray a prayer just like Jesus may have prayed. prayed. It begins with our Father, and we join with Jesus and millions of believers and followers in praying this special prayer he gave us. Let me push this idea just a little step further. Suppose that you are in a worship service, a multi, multinational worship service where many people from many nations are gathered together, and you happen to be standing next to a person who is from China, and the worship service that you're engaged in calls for you to pray the Lord's Prayer. So you join with all of the others, many nations, many races, many colors, so forth, and you're both saying the Lord's Prayer, and you both say, Our Father. And as you, and after the prayer is said, you look over and recognize that this Chinese person claims the same Father as you do. What an awareness. We have the same Father or any number of other possible persons of differentness that you might stand beside and you would both say, Our Father, claiming that very special relationship for each of you and all of you. A person of different color, different race, different nationality, different gender, and we both said out loud to, see, to the prayer, Our Father. I want to share with you in closing why this special prayer, this Lord's Prayer, is so special to me. My wife Beth and I prayed the prayer together for years. When she became ill, she would have difficulty remembering the words and uh, we solved the problem in this way. I would say a phrase, and she would repeat it a after me, like an echo. Our Father, and she would say, Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven. Until the time of her death, we used this special method of praying the Lord's Prayer. So now, when I say the prayer, I use the same method. I say a phrase, and then I echo that phrase. I find it very meaningful in many ways. You may find this way, or a special way of your own, to pray this prayer that Jesus has taught us and given us. Let the prayer speak to God for you and to you each day of your life. Pray it to him and say, Our Father.